The Truth About Gianni Versace and Andrew Cunanan's Relationship The first episode of American Crime Story Season 2, titled The Assassination of Gianni Versace, wastes no time in linking spree killer Andrew Cunanan with his final and most famous victim, Gianni Versace. The series opens with a sweeping sequence showing Versace looking out majestically from the balcony of his Miami mansion while Cunanan sifts through a shabby sand-logged backpack on the beach below, immediately establishing the have and have not in FX's grim fable. The premiere the Man Who Would Be Vogue is front-loaded with two encounters between Cunanan and Versace, one in the VIP room of a nightclub, and one on the stage of the San Francisco Opera following a performance of Capriccio, for which Versace designed costumes. Given Cunanan's propensity for pathological lying and the dreamlike quality of these sequences, though, what is the truth about Cunanan and Versace's relationship, and what are we meant to see is simply Cunanan's delusion. In 1997, Vanity Fair contributing editor Maury North, who wrote the book on which the assassination of Gianni Versace is based, was the first to report that Cunanan and Versace actually had met in San Francisco. In 1990, Based on interviews with multiple witnesses to the interaction, Orth described how Cunanan and his friend Eli Gould met the fashion designer in the VIP room of the nightclub Colossus. The designer walked in with an entourage, including Versace's boyfriend, Antonio D'Amico and Capriccio choreographer, Val Canipperly, who quickly introduced him to a few people. After about 15 minutes of chit-chat and waves of young men eager to meet him, Versace began to survey the room. He noticed Andrew standing with Eli, cocked his head, and walked in their direction. I know you, he said to Andrew. Largo di Como. No, Versace was referring to the house he owned on Lake Como near the Swiss border. Reportedly he would often use the Largo di Como line when he wanted to strike up a conversation with someone.